Uh, welcome to the uh, Clackamas County Board of Commissioners policy session on this May 11th, 2021. We're starting out with um, our issues from Administrator Gary Schmidt. Thank you, Chair Smith. Uh, all commissioners are present except for Commissioner Schrader, who is out of the office today. Uh, Commissioner Savas is on Zoom. First, American Rescue Plan Act funds update. Elizabeth Comfort, Director of Finance, will give a quick update and the good news about us getting the money, perhaps today, tomorrow? Yes. Go ahead, please. Thank Elizabeth. you, Gary. Good morning, Chair Smith and Commissioners. Uh, I'm Elizabeth Comfort, Finance Director, and I just have a brief update on our American Rescue Plan Act. Uh, the good news is yesterday they released uh, a portal for us to subscribe to to receive the funds via ACH Automatic Clearinghouse. That has been... Um, uh, registered and we are ready to receive. Gary is our authorized signer. And so as soon as those funds are received, Brian Nava, our treasurer, will let us know and we'll communicate that immediately to you. We are anticipating 50%, which would be approximately 40 million to be deposited. Uh, just a reminder, we do have 30 million budgeted uh, in our next fiscal year starting July 1st. For? Uh, for yet to be, de de yet to be determined but we wanted to have at least some funds in the budget available. I see. Uh, we can always make modifications as needs arise. Uh, our spending guidance also came out yesterday. It's an eight page document. You should have received that in your morning email. Um, I believe uh, Stephen Madcor sent that out, but I also have a, a document I can forward to you. Uh, and that goes over very high level with some detail of uh, what um, the guidelines are for the spending, what's authorized and what is ineligible. Uh, I was able to jump onto a webinar yesterday afternoon and they went through the guideline just basically page by page. They did not have a Q&A at the time, but they did say at the end that they will offer a, um, a frequently asked question page and then another Q&A opportunity. Good. So well, uh, keep sending that to us as we learn more about what we're able to do with this money. Yes, absolutely. Uh, we want to share that the public survey has been out. Um, we have, as of 6 o'clock this morning, 2,900 responses to our English version of that survey. The Spanish language uh, and Russian languages versions are now online, um, and uh, the responses have been are being collected. Um, more on that from PGA later when they have uh, data and analysis of those responses. Um, those will continue be it to be available through the month of May. Good. The, uh, there is a committee. We meet every Tuesday to review the American uh, Rescue Plan Act uh, dollars and how the county can, should, could um, uh, utilize those in our community. And uh, we're having conversations on definitions and criterias and collection of data on these various categories, uh, which do meet the guidelines that uh, were confirmed um, in the report yesterday that were received by um, the Treasury Department. And that's my report. If you have any questions, I'd be... I know we <clears throat> all look forward to getting more information on that and taking a deep dive. I understand from AOC yesterday that the Treasury could be putting out an encyclopedia on how to use the money. And so I'm really thankful that you're able to sit in and get as much information as you can on that and then to bring it forward to us. Any commissioner comments, Christina? I have Commissioner Fisher. Commissioner Fisher. Yeah, thank you for the update. So I'm, I'm sure that the rest of my commissioners have received requests from people in the community for how to use the money. I'm just curious what we should be doing as a commission. Maybe we need a central place, like Caroline Hill was our, um, when we have our small grants program, if we have one person to just keep that information so that we can um, have that tracked. I'm not sure what our process is, but I think we need one because I'm not doing a very good job keeping track of everything myself. Right. So right. we have a staff committee, so I, it needs to go to the staff committee. So someone in our county admin office should be coordinating that. Let me work offline and figure out who that will be. So good that idea. Have you sent I all think that we all me. have had, you know, that, that, and we can't say yes or no without. I mean, I want to say it, tell somebody, oh, yes, and then have them get turned down. And, right. I mean, none of us want to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, anything else, Commissioner? Nope, that's all. Uh, Christina? Uh, Commissioner Savas. Commissioner Savas, you're up. Yeah, I, as I mentioned here uh, a couple of weeks ago, I believe, um, I really think that we need to um, plan a work session, a detailed one, um, on 
our strategy on how we apply these dollars as efficiently um, as possible. And I, there'll obviously be a lot of people interested in receiving funds for whatever particular purpose they're interested in, but we need to manage it and manage it carefully. And uh, I, I'd like to get some idea, maybe even this morning right now, to when we might anticipate having that kind of discussion well, I think we, um, <clears throat> of course, um, that makes sense that we would do that. I think we're still waiting, aren't we, Elizabeth, to get all the guidelines codified so you can make a presentation to the board? That is correct. And one of the exercises that the, task, the staff task committee is doing is working on collecting um, data and definitions and criteria. So when we have these guidelines, make sure that they match with the criteria that we've set up so that we're... Um, fair and equitable in our um, offerings to the community and how to use them throughout the community. Um, and then we are taking, we are trying to collect a list so that kind of like a funnel, you know, put these ideas in and make sure that they meet um, these different guidelines and criteria so then when we disperse them that they would be appropriate. Do you anticipate a timeline, when a general timeline that you can bring that to the board? Uh, we are working on this weekly, and so I would say within the next 30 days. 30 days, okay. And we have anticipated the budget to start July 1, so then when, when, that, um, when that starts, when that time clock hits, that we would be really ready to um, uh, put these dollars into play into our community. Gary. So early June, we'll have a policy session with you. That's why we're doing weekly updates, so you're kept up to speed. On April 27th, staff shared with you the seven funding buckets that staff was going to recommend, uh, and we heard no objections for you, commissioners, so that's still the pl plan staff is moving forward on. Not a penny will be spent until you approve it. The money's not going anywhere. We're going to have it for, until we spend it, and I think we have two or three years to spend it. So my advice is, and I know you know this, let's not rush because when we are totally accountable for every penny you spend, so we need to make sure we have the systems in place to do that. I also understand there's an urgency in the community because they, wanna, they need these funds. So mm -hmm. we'll come to you in a timely manner, but it'll be after the budget committee meetings in two weeks. Early June, we'll have a policy session with you to help n solidify how you wish to spend those funds. Thank you. That's excellent. <clears throat> Commissioner Fisher? Yeah, I'm just trying to, all the different pieces of dollars and the different opportunities. I think we all received an email from Leah Horner talking about there's going to be a press conference, I think in an hour. It's going to potentially lower the restrictions mm -hmm. exorbitantly if we are able to get a certain percentage of our community immunized. And so I'm not sure if we wanted to do something more to incentivize vaccinations, um, there was talk, Mayor Gamba had a question about an event, about um, like a brew and a shot, or a, you know, different ideas that are really percolating to promote vaccinations. Well, to piggyback, we, to piggyback on that. How would we do that? Last night at the Tri-Chairs meetings, and I was gonna bring this up later, uh, Leo Horner said, there's money coming forward uh, to get ahead of the vaccinations to incentivize our population, those who have not received a vaccination. And it's really to our discretion how we spend the money. It can be a $10 coupon in a restaurant. It can be a pizza. And then my, my um, question was, well, fine. Do we have the vaccine? I mean, that's the issue. Uh, Clackamas County has, there's some hard dates that was given to us last night on when Clackamas County, see if you're at, what the metric was, at 70% um, vac vaccination rate, there'd be no restrictions in the state. At 65% vaccination rate, we would be at low. And for the tri-counties, since that's on the phone last night, Clackamas County would be at 52% June 2nd, or we're at 52% now, but, but it would take us until June 12th to get to 65%, assuming we had the vaccine, which would mean we could go into low category, which would be wonderful. Mm -hmm. And I said, um, and our vaccine rate was a lower than Washington and Multnomah County. And I made the comment that I didn't think it was so much hesitancy, although it might be, is that availability to our very rural, remote areas getting it out there. And I had a nurse uh, come to me 
and he was talking to me about getting the vax out. He says, why don't we just, you know, get some people like myself who are trained to give vax and I, we can start rolling our cars out and going to people's homes and doing whatever to vaccinate them. I says, hey, that's a good idea. At that time, we just didn't have the available vax. But maybe we start thinking something like that yeah. um, for people who want them to, to get out to them. And we can put together a program. But... I thought her press conference was at 1.30 today, but maybe it's okay. earlier. No, it's usually 11, but it might be 1.30. Um, but I wanted to wait to see what the governor was going to announce for sure. Mm -hmm. And 50% um, of the dollars will be up front for incentivizing, and then another 50% comes later. And I didn't even understand the later metric at all. So it's something that we can look at. Okay. And you well, know, you raise great. a good point. We have a lot of dollars coming in from a lot of different sources. And most recently, was it, was it the $2.7 million that's coming in from, because we want to extreme risk. Mm -hmm. And that should be distributed to the people most affected by it. Well, I, and Gary and I talked about this. I do think we have people in the county who will be key points who are monitoring that and making sure that it goes out to where it needs to go. We've just been hurry up and waiting for all this to happen, and it's certainly going to bear discussion, and I do believe our administration has a plan in place for that. Um, but, you know, we can certainly talk about it, absolutely. Christina? Uh, Commissioner Savas. Commissioner Savas, you're up. Yeah, just going back to the uh, idea of incentives for vaccinations, I'm supportive of that, but I do want to make sure that we're not um, suggesting that people, um, if the CDC guidance I heard was not to consume alcoholic beverages that we're not we're not uh take gonna be supporting the idea of people being intoxicated or getting intoxicated i, I think the whole idea was to make sure people were um well um, um well fed i mean they're in good shape um they've they're fully hydrated mm -hmm. um they're they're healthy they're ready to go when they get their shot not mm -hmm. to uh indulge into um other things that could lower their resistance so um, love to hear some, something from staff maybe on Thursday as far as, you know, what, what recommendations are to, you know, make sure that when you get your vaccination, whether it's your first shot or your second shot, um, that you keep yourself in good shape um, so that you have the least amount of reaction or vulnerabilities. Any other That's comments? Any other comments? Gary. Okay, thank you, Elizabeth. Next topic, Commissioner Summer Video Outreach Proposal. Dylan Blaylock from Public and Government Affairs will present. There was a memo in your packet. Right. Go ahead, Dylan. Thank you very much. Good morning, Chair Smith. Good morning, Commissioners, and good morning, County Administrator Schmidt. Great to see you all in person. I am Dylan Blaylock with Public and Government Affairs. As uh, uh, County Administrator Schmidt just referenced, you have a memo in front of you with a proposal for a BCC video outreach series to start this coming summer, this would be a Facebook Live or live to tape style series that is modeled after a successful program that we put together back in 2019. To remind the commissioners who were sitting on the board at that time, Commissioner Savas, we did a census series with you, uh, which was very successful, and Commissioner Fisher, we did, uh, you were part of a series regarding the change in the law making strangulation a felony during domestic violence. Those are very successful videos. Uh, yours alone got more than 3,000 views on Facebook. The way that this would work is PGA would uh, schedule these with your policy advisors and each uh, commissioner would take a general, one of the five strategic priorities from Performance Clackamas and we would figure out a location for that depending on what you wanted to speak about. We would give you a roadmap ahead of time. Uh, there would be a PGA staffer who would conduct an interview with you and again, these would all be done in one shot. Of course, we would not um, to put it out if you weren't happy with it. We would make sure that it was a, a good quality video and we got the points out that you wanted to make. And you have some examples in the memo in front of you about how where we could go for each one. The last thing I'll mention is that we in no way want to restrict commissioners by assigning them to one. Uh, if uh, the first commissioner to go wanted to do something under ensure safe, healthy, and secure communities, and then two commissioners down a couple months later wanted to do something along the same topic, that's fine. We can go ahead and do that. So we are seeking uh, approval. If you wanted to go down this route, I'm happy to answer any questions. This sounds like fun. Commissioners, do we have comments? It is fun. Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, any comments on that? Well, I don't see any objections. So if you just want to tee up commissioners and ask them that, what they want to talk about, I think that's a great idea, Dylan. Okay, very good. We will, I will get in touch with the PAs and we'll schedule that. And we'll probably start come uh, either late June or July. Thank so you. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, next, transportation maintenance conditional use application. Dan Johnson, Director of Transportation and Development, will present. There was a memo in your packet. Go ahead, Dan. Speaking of fun, I, we have some fun stuff to talk to you today. Sand sheds, that's exciting. Um, our Department of Transportation and, and uh, Maintenance, uh, located on Abernathy Road, has two remote facilities. And at those remote facilities, one, one off of Markham and one off of um, El Dorado, we are needing to replace uh, the current sheds that cover our winter sand. Um, the packet spells out for you uh, the information and the land use process that we think we need to go through. Congratulations, board. You are the owners of this property, and you have the signature authority to apply for a land use process that we have to put these um, various sheds through. So in short, I would request from the Board of County Commissioners today that they delegate uh, to Gary Schmidt, uh, County Administrator, the ability to sign. These land use applications, which whatever they may be, we think it's a condition to use currently, um, but we have to go through those proper land use processes as does everyone, everyone else. So I'd be happy to answer any questions. Yes, uh, do we have any um, questions or concerns for Dan on this project? No. Nope. And Dan, you would like uh, to go ahead and proceed and give Gary signing authority, is that what I hear? If, if the board would be so comfortable in doing so. Any objections to that, commissioners? Uh, hearing none, I guess it's a deal. Okay, great. Thank you. Next, Development Agency Supplemental Budget Request. Dan will also present. There was a memo in your packet. Go ahead. Thank you so much. Um, and this, this, we struggled with this one because we weren't sure if we should put it as an issues discussion or add to the consent agenda portion of today's meeting. But I wanted to give the commissioners a chance to ask any questions they may have. We are going to request to put forward on um, the consent agenda a supplemental budget for the Clackamas County Development Agency. In short, it does two simple things. It does not change any spending authority that was approved in last year's budget. It's simply, we are simply winding down one of our larger districts, which is the Clackamas Town Center District. So this is a supplemental budget. We'll do one, the first thing it will do, we'll basically recognize our ending fund balance to make sure that's accurate. And then secondly, close the debt service fund and transfer those monies into the operating fund. That is all it will do. And then we will bring back to, um, in front of the Board of County Commissioners in the next two weeks, the formal budget presentation for next fiscal year for the development agency. I'd be happy to answer any questions, but we're looking for the board's authorization to put this forward on, on a future consent agenda. Uh, Gary. Actually, uh, if you choose to go forward, commissioners, I recommend a public hearing because we're doing one on this exact May 20th. We're doing a public hearing for the general county budget. We could do one as well for this, and therefore the public can comment if they wish. I, we can. It's less than 10%. So. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Never mind. No, it's. Never mind. My sorry. apologies. I should sorry. have clarified that in the information. Yeah. Um, commissioners, do we have any questions uh, about these, uh, supp this supplemental budget from DTD? I don't. Any objections to what uh, Dan Johnson wants to do? <clears throat> Seeing none, I guess that's a go. Thank you so much for the time. The 20th consent agenda, we'll add it to the list. Perfect. Thank, Thank you. you, Dan. Next, this is a revisit Concord property, a Brolin PSA purchase and sale agreement. This was about a vacated road that the board had uh, questions about. So we're following back up with you to see if we can answer your questions. We have Sarah Ekman, Interim Director of Business and Community Services, and Jeffrey Munns from County Council's office. Please go ahead. Good morning, thank you. Uh, Chair Smith, Commissioners, Administrator Schmidt, we're back. Uh, we were here last week. We have a property purchase which is included um, in the packet, and it is approval of a purchase and sale agreement between NCPRD and a company called Brolin Company, LLC. Brolin owns a small piece of property adjacent to the Concord property, uh, the location of the future Oak Lodge Library, NCPRD Park, Community Center, and administrative offices. This property purchase is beneficial to carrying out our master plan for this project and redevelopment um, in concept for the Concord property and ultimately increases safe access to the property. Jeff Munns, Assistant County Counsel, was very gracious and agreed to come today. So he's going to talk a bit more about some of the legal aspects of the proposed purchase. Yes, thank you. This, uh, this piece of property was um, discovered to be encroaching upon, or owned by uh, the adjacent property owners and the use of the property was encroaching upon their ownership. This was discovered during the survey completed in the master planning process. 
So as part of that, we've discovered that it is it's the northwestern portion of the property, and it was formerly Olive Avenue. In 1966, North Clackamas School District, then it was Concord School District, owned Concord School. And Olive Avenue and Spalding Avenue were on this property, and in the school district approached the county commission at that time to vacate these streets for the safety of the students. This then uh, set off a long um, dispute with the neighborhood and with adjacent property owners that was resolved in 1977 with the streets being vacated. The school then continued to use the property as they had been, including these roads, but as access to the property. That use continued until the school stopped operation in 2015 and then in 2018, the Parks District received this property as part of the Hoodview Park sale proceeds. So they received this school and two others. And now in part of the process, they've discovered this encroachment and the need to resolve this issue. So they have worked with the adjoining property owner, this Brolin Company, to acquire this small strip of land through a property line adjustment and the purchase and sale agreement and the deed acceptance are, are before you and we ask that they be included in the consent agenda for this Thursday for approval. Do you have any questions? Any questions uh, for the presenters on this? Can you talk, I'm sorry if you just said it and I spaced, but more about the vacated road because that was the issue last time about, what, was there a cost, did we no, it was. Sell that. More about we did, that. We did not. The um, what happened was the school district asked us to vacate the roads because they were in the middle of a school property essentially, and then what would happen is the roadway, the right of way, was split equally between the two adjacent property owners. So the school district got half of the road, and then the property owners on the other side of the road received the other half of the roadway. There's no cost associated with that. It was just given back and closed essentially by gates at either end, so that this it was not open to traffic during this, the use for the students. And that use continued uh, from the time it was vacated in 1977 until the present time. It's still a closed road, but that the, during this entire period of time, the school has been using that full right of way. And so they were using sort of the other side of the road as well as the one that they were given in this deed and the, when the road was vacated in 1977. You know, the school district asked for it to be uh, sort of given to the end, the adjacent property owner and the county commission um, agreed, vacated the roadway. And now, you know, <laughs> through the, just as the transactions transpired, you know, nobody contemplated this would ever become a county property, but we did acquire the school in 2018 and now we're redeveloping it into library and community center and so on. And it's beneficial for the access, and this, again, the safety of the use of the property to have this, this issue resolved and fully use that right of way to, for the uh, continued use of the property. So if I get this straight, when the school district owned the property, it was an easement right of way, correct? It was a roadway uh, originally, and then it became simply their owned property. But they on, did not own fee title. They owned the fee title to their half of the right of way. So the old roadway essentially is gone other than it's paved land, but there's no longer a right of way there. The uh, par parcels join essentially at the center of the old right of way now. And what we're trying to do is obtain the other half of that right of way, the former right of way, because that's what the use is. There's a fence line there and uh, the property has been used to utilize the entire former right of way. And it's going to be necessary to provide the best access and safety for the use of the property. And that's why they require, want, seek to acquire those additional parcels in this one. Did, in we, did the school district ever own that roadway at all in fee title? Half of it they do, and we do as well now. So we are acquiring the part that is fee title. We're acquiring that back. We're acquiring the other half of fee title to this parcel. Any uh, further comment? Um, what a deal. Hope we don't have many of these coming forward. Uh, any other further questions by commissioners? So the request is to put this back, to put this on the consent agenda for this Thursday, if you agree, commissioners. Any Correct. objections to putting this item back on the consent agenda? I see none. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you for uh, explaining, Sarah and Jeff. Uh, next item, advisory boards and commissions appointments. Christina, please go ahead. All righty, we have two items. Uh, the first ABC is 
the North Clackamas Parks and Recreation District Advisory Committee, the DAC. It is replacing the form, former District Advisory Board and in partnership with community members, <clears throat> new district uh, sub area boundaries have been created to better and more proportionately represent the communities. Uh, the new DAC bylaws calls for 11 committee members, including two representing each of the five sub areas and one at large position representing community centers. Let's see, it says through each position will eventually be a four year term, but for the first cycle, there will be several shorter terms to ensure a staggered member turnover in the future. The newly appointed committee members will work with the district staff to determine specific first terms. I have the first four areas, uh, sub areas. Sub area number one is Deborah Bukowski. Sub area number one also will have Grover Bornfeld. Sub area number two will have Anata Blackmar and Ryan Stee. Sub area number three is Luca Dorito and Jan Albrecht. Sub area number four, excuse me, number four will have Dan Gilman and Maureen Tom. The recommendation for the community center representative uh, is outlined in the bylaws for the general specific overview. It will be Milwaukee Center Joel Bergman. And the appointment for sub area number five, which will encompass the city of Milwaukee, looks like the representatives will be Desi Nicodemus and Ben Johnson. And then for the second ABC, the Clackamas Workforce Partnership currently has four openings on their commission due to term expirations. 25 members are allowed with three-year terms. In their recruitment process, two applications were received and one was recommended to be appointed. The one that was recommended is Larlene Dunsmuir, and that would be for their first term. And I do see that Commissioner Savas has a question. Commissioner Savas. Uh, I don't have a question. I just moved to approve this late. Oh, perfect. <laughs> yeah, do I hear a second? Seconded. I have a question regarding the um, new um, parks district, the DAC. Uh, the people who are appointed on that, did any of them come from the old uh, parks advisory board? Do we know? I do believe so. So are we just like taking that body and putting it over here into the next body? Does anybody know? No. Sarah, do you yeah, know? Yeah, but there, there are, Chair, there are two people that um, ran for this election here just a couple weeks ago and they were appointed, or so to speak, not appointed, but they were um, moved forward for appointment by the BCC. So two of them um, uh, from area one and the city recommendation um, from the city of Milwaukee area five, uh, one of those pe one of those persons, Ben Johnson, is also from the former DAB, and Joel Bergman with the um, Milwaukee Center, the community center, is also um, a former member. So there's four people altogether um, that were uh, basically reaffirmed um, by their uh, their body of representation that that moved them forward to approval today. Thank you, Paul. Uh, Sarah, do you have a comment? I was just going to confirm that. So everybody who is listed here did apply and was voted for by their community. So those who were involved previously then were a part of this new process. So, uh, well, that, okay, so it sounds like four uh, came from the old board that have experience, correct? And then the other remaining are new people coming on, correct? Correct. Okay, yes. which is good. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, I'm just trying to to quantify who's who's on first here because I don't recognize a lot of these names. I'm really happy that a lot of people uh, stepped up to the plate and applied for these volunteer positions. It takes time and effort to do that. Um, it's nice that we have some new enthusiasm coming in, and it's nice that we have some experience to guide to guide us forward on this. So, um, with that in mind, um, any other comments? Christina, would you take the poll, please? Yes. Commissioner Fisher? Aye. Commissioner Savas? Aye. Commissioner Scholl? Aye. And Chair Smith? Aye. Motion passes 5-0. Thank you. 
Uh, thank you. Next is review of your business meeting agenda for this Thursday, May 13th, 2021. It is an evening business meeting. It will be at 6 o'clock p.m. There will be a wildfire update, COVID-19 update, a presentation proclaiming May 15th as Peace Officers Memorial Day in Clackamas County, and then a consent agenda. And that is your meeting. If you have any questions about any item on the agenda, if you would let me know prior to Thursday, and we can get that answered for you. <clears throat> Next, board August recess dates. In the past, at least for the last decade, the Board of County Commissioners has chosen to take two weeks at the end of August off for a recess period. It, it uh, evolves around when the Labor Day holiday is. So if you were to do that again this year, those dates, those two weeks would be August 23rd through September 6th, which is Labor Day. So I just wanna confirm if you would like to continue a two week August recess, and if so, if those dates are agreeable to you. Do we have any comments from commissioners on the uh, August recess? Yeah, say it again, Gary, August 23rd. The August 23rd through Monday, September 6th, which is Labor Day. So you'd resume business on Tuesday, September 7th. It's that last full week in August, and the next week is a split week of the end of August, the beginning of September. Yeah, that's good with me. Looks good. See no objections to that, Gary. Okay, Please we'll move give forward. notice to staff. Uh, next, Willamette Falls and Landings National Heritage Area Support Letter. Commissioner Schrader is not here today and would have presented this, but asked me to present in her absence. She is bringing this forward as Commissioner Schrader is the county's representative on the Willamette Falls and Landings Heritage Area Coalition Group. This is simply a letter from the Board of County Commissioners reaffirming the county's support to designate uh, the Willamette Falls area as a National Heritage Area designation. The county has been working on this for probably about 10 years as well. It's a long, long process. The, the county boards prior have done letters of support as well. It's been a few years since you've done a letter of support. So the group is asking and Commissioner Schrader is asking if the county would again do a letter of support for the Willamette Falls and Landings designation as a National Heritage Area. And there's a draft in your packet, draft letter. Um. We have a draft letter in front of us, Commissioner. Does anybody have comments on the wording or anything else? There's a light on. Commissioner Fisher has her hand. Commissioner right? Fisher. So I need just a little bit of schooling. Chair Smith, you might know all of this because you were you've very, been very involved, or Commissioner Savas. But there are all these different groups, and I get very confused as to which groups do what. Right. And I'm not sure which group this is, yeah, since this I'm is not, not at the table at these groups. Yeah, this is not the falls, nor is this the trust. This is the heritage area organization, so. I, I believe Jody Carson sits as the president. Is that correct, Gary? Uh, oh, actually, I, Tracy, do you know? I'm not sure who the actual president is of this group, if I may. There are three, as Commissioner Savas said, there are three different projects surrounding the Willamette Falls. First is the effort to reopen the Willamette Falls locks. Mm -hmm. Second is the Willamette Falls Legacy Project, which is the redevelopment of the old Blue Heron paper mill site and building a river walk um, on that site. Third is the coalition we're talking about today, which is indeed a coalition of local uh, governments and businesses to designate the area around the Willamette Falls itself north and south of the river and the lands next to it as a federal national heritage area. That simply is a federal designation that sort of like a historic register uh, designation, it, it saves the site or recognizes the site as a national heritage area. There's a little bit of federal funding involved, but not much. It's mostly just a national designation. And so this is ne yet to be designated, correct? Correct. But we correct. keep asking every year. And I assume all of the partners involved are in agreement with this because we haven't heard anybody in opposition to this. Yeah. I move for approval. Second? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll second it. Any other further comments from commissioners? So Go my ahead. only yes. comment, I'm not sure if um, Martine or Equity Group has looked at this letter. I want, just want to make sure that we have, and I'm not sure if this was, um, just a remake of a previous letter, but I just want to make sure that we are being sensitive to all the different, and I love the sentence, the second paragraph. We believe 
this place is special. Clackamas County is proud to bear the namesake of the indigenous people that call Willamette Falls home and understand that the history of this area stretches back into time in memoriam, M memorial. So I really like that, but I just want to make sure that it, that the language that we're saying is in, is, um, because Mary, I wouldn't, do you have a comment I, I wouldn't on that? know. Uh, yes, so Martine herself has not read this letter, but our public and government affairs staff and Tracy Moreland, who is our tribal liaison, have read the letter. We certainly could ask Martine to look at it. Um, so, well, yes. If you wanted to go back, then we'll have to um, redo the motion. We'll have to not vote on it today. If you want the, that group to, to, to check on it. I mean, not necessarily. I just want, I mean, if, if our administrator says this has been vetted and it's all good, then I'm, I'm good with it. I just have that lens, especially of given the issues with the Willamette Falls Trust, I want to make sure that we're being sensitive to all the considerations that we may not see, so. So Chair Smith, I just defer to what, what you think we should do. Well, it's been, it's been, we've been doing it for 10 years and so far there's no controversy surrounding it. Um, I don't know. If you want it vetted, then we're going to have to um, cancel the motion. The letter is not urgent, so we could, we could ask our equity staff to review it and bring it back next week. That's fine. Sonia, do you want to do that? I mean, I would feel more comfortable doing that. But, or even at the end of the day or before we're done today. Uh, the maker of the motion, Paul. Yeah, <clears throat> I'm okay, I'll just go with the flow. Um, it's, I, yeah, I'll just go with the flow. Yeah, and I seconded the motion, didn't I? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's okay with me, I forgot. Uh, yeah, we can take it back. And if Martine um, can get to it today, she can get to it, if not. We'll, we'll bring it back next Tuesday. For yep, okie doke. Uh, and I have confirmed, thank you to Samara who texted me, the chair of this coalition is John Gustafson. Yeah, I see that in the letter, I misspoke. Yeah. Thank you, Samara. Very good. All right, so we'll bring this back to you next week. Thank you, commissioners. Uh, next, history and culture resolution draft. Uh, chair Smith, this is an item she has asked to bring forward to the board. There is a draft of the resolution within your packet today. So we're seeking your feedback on the resolution and then if you're ready to put it on a business meeting. But Chair Smith, would you like to tee it up, please? Well, this is an idea that I've had for quite some time. You know, I'm very supportive of our history and culture of, of Clackamas County and I think we need to honor it and, and preserve it as much as we can. Um, this particular draft resolution honors our history and culture and makes it tourism significant is what it's designed to do. And a lot of people have added their information to this. Um, the um, Clackamas County Historical Society, I believe our tourism board has looked at it. Uh, Martine has been given a copy of this. We haven't heard back from her. But if any of the commissioners would like to add anything to that, I have a little sticky note here from with um, somebody wanted some additions to this. And one of them was to include uh, the Wild Falls Locks. I'm not opposed to that. And the second one is to broaden beyond Oregon City. And the reason why um, Oregon City is so significant, because of what's in the letter. Oregon City is the oldest city west of the Mississippi, and the first. And so that's why that's significant, but we can certainly brought it to other areas in Clackamas County. Um, for instance, the city of Malala has quite the historical society. And in, in appending this letter, I did not intend to exclude any places like that um, in this. And if anybody, commissioners, want to take a stab at this and, and wordsmith it, I'm not opposed to that. Stephen, you have read this? Yes, Chair, I did. It was very well done. Okay, thank you. Um, Commissioner Savas, are you in the queue? Yeah, yeah, I am. Uh yeah, the letter looks, I mean, not the letter, the resolution looks pretty darn good. Um, but I, I think more important at this one be make sure it's vetted more so than the other one because history um, and culture is um, predates um, the end of the, the Oregon Trail and, you know, our existence here. And it does speak to that to some degree, but I think we need to be very thoughtful about make sure we get this right because with the current... Um, discussions going on amongst the tribes, it, apparently 
the history and the stories uh, seem to be um, uh, uh, quite the topic um, and there's not full agreement. So I want to make sure we're not stepping on any toes <clears throat> on this one and we're being very thoughtful in recognizing um, the indigenous people of the, of the land. Well, and one of the paragraphs does do that. Um, if you want to offer up some language, additional language on that, I'm not opposed. Tracy, you have read this. She's in the room. Um, Mark, would you come forward, please, dear, um, to talk about that? Um, in fact, we mentioned twice in here about um, ancestral home, as well as a key fishing and trading center for the indigenous peoples and tribes who were displaced by government policies. Talk about hydropower mills, and then again, the next paragraph. Um, it, uh, whereas Clackamas County is a part partner with the Willamette Falls Legacy Project, which will revive cherished cultural site, restore public access, Oregon City as a historical city, a tourism destination, and restore habitat for fish, lamprey, and numerous other species, which the tribes do a ceremonial um, fish uh, catch. Is that the right term, Tracy? Yeah, yes, it is, and I, I, I did read, read it. It's great. Um, the advice that I offered Emily was just to err on the side of inclusivity because so many tribes and bands have connection to the falls, so we don't want to be exclude any tribe. And then if we're going to use traditional names or indigenous names, um, then we want to check on the accuracy of those. I think different tribes and bands um, used uh, their own language for historical places and markers. So that's, those are my two caveats right there. Um, so you would add all indigenous tribes to Cla from Clackamas County? Yeah, just uh, I would, yes, Chair, add a sentence you or two. you have some language we could add later? Yeah, okay. and I believe that um, I'm working with Martine and our uh, EDI staff. Good. We could create something. I knew something she was working on this. Um, any other ideas from commissioners? Are you up? Yes. So I have been an advocate for our heritage since I became a commissioner. And sort of my thought about this is whenever I go someplace, the first thing I do is I go find a museum and I like try to learn about it. So as far as tying our heritage efforts to tourism, I just think that's really, really important. And I am hoping that really asserting it can help us with sort of that direction and that policy. But I really appreciate what Commissioner Sava said and what Tracy said about just making sure that our language is inclusive, that we're um, recognizing our indigenous peoples. And as your leaders of equity, diversity, and inclusion, I had the wonderful experience of just listening to the conversation around that group developing its own land acknowledgement and the use of language. And, and I love, Chair Smith, also that you're wanting to look at it as all of Clackamas County, because Mount Hood is in, an incredible um, resource with a lot of history and culture, and we we just have an incredibly special place. Uh, you know, Malala, for instance, is the uh, one of the first stagecoach stops in, in in Southern Clackamas County, and one of the first railroads. I mean, you know, we could go on and on and on, and this could be ten pages long. I just don't know how far to go in listing. Uh, you know, will some cities feel left out? Um, I just don't know. Paul Savas, do, are you up? Yeah. Um, so I just want to build on this. I understand as I read the title, you know, affirming Clackamas County's commitment to history and culture. And so I get, understand the title. And I think I understand the purpose here. Um, and I think we need to remember if, um, that a lot of history and, um, and culture preceded 1843. And so, though that's a long time ago in the history of the people that are indigenous to this land, that is not a very long time. So I think some greater recognition that they are, a, a, have a deeper, longer history of this area ought to be spelled out because in the whereases, it seems to be more 1843 forward and less, less the, what, what took place here in history and the tribes um, and their culture so I, I think some greater emphasis recognizing that uh, history in Clackamas County or in this, in, on this, in this land did not begin in 1843. Any other comments from commissioners on that? 
Yeah, I'll just make a quick comment that maybe a process and I think getting input on this is part of the journey. The outcome is in the journey of getting the input of different mm -hmm. groups. So I think it's worth mm -hmm. having the conversation, but possibly just tying onto what Commissioner Sava said, maybe starting off more historically and starting with the first peoples of the land might be a way to start the um Stephen, do you have any recommendations on that to how to approach that i'm putting you on the spot sorry it sounds like it should be revisited it sounds like we should probably take a look and add some more uh, culturally sensitive and pre-Anglo language to it and make sure that it is uh, run by our EDI folks to make sure that we don't um, inadvertently omit or offend anybody who does have association and relationship with, uh, you know, Clackamas mm -hmm. County history. I would agree. And who's going to take the lead on getting that language in uh, for I, us? I'd be happy to make sure that we would, have it. Would you like to work with Martine and Tracy on that? Absolutely. Oh, Actually, I Tracy's would really going to be leading that. I'd be happy to work with her on it. Uh, you know, if, Commissioner Savas brought up a couple good points, as well as Commissioner Fisher. We can incorporate that into that, and we'll just take another stab at it. When it's done, we'll send a draft to commissioners, and you can make further comments on it at that time, and we'll see what we get going on this. Yeah, and, and if I could say thank you so much, I, I really think it's a wonderful idea, and I, and I really believe that there's a way that we can incorporate the language to include the indigenous history and what Commissioner Savas was talking about and Commissioner Fisher, and then include the pioneer history that, every, that, so, that means so much to a lot of people. We can, we can include both. Mm -hmm. in there. And commissioners, don't lose sight of the purpose for this resolution. And that is that all of this becomes an important, an important tourism component. And that's why we're doing that with that in mind. Thank you very much. Any other comments for our writers on this? Thanks a lot. Oh, Chair Smith, just another little. I see um, this issue and also our arts is also a tourism driver. And so I'm just putting that plug in, sort of lobbying my county administrator as we look at how we're moving forward in our budgeting to look at as what is a driver for tourism. And the, these are the two areas that have been somewhat not systematically looked at within the landscape of Clackamas. I think we're having a policy session this afternoon on the oh. Arts Alliance. Okay. Yeah, I think we'll be okay on that. Um, I think that's all the discussion on this item. Gary, what's up next? Hey, great. Next, a broadband update. Chair Smith, you'd like to share this? Please go well, ahead. Well, we all attended that really wonderful broadband town hall. Was that last week? And we heard from so many people on it. And we, I think commissioners are in agreement. You know, we have parts of Clackamas County are woefully underserved. And I've been kind of peeling through my mind, figuring out what the heck we're going to do with that. And then I attended the Association of Oregon Conference, uh, Association of Oregon Counties Conference yesterday, and we had a marvelous presentation on broadband in rural areas. And it was the Oregon Broadband Advisory Council Chair, Joseph Fresnel. And I've got this um, print out, and we can get it to you. And, I, and I, it's my intent to get it to the commissioners. <laughs> but you know what happened yesterday. We were just, boo, we didn't have time. But I just want to put out some ideas for commissioners to, to consider. I think we do have a roadmap to get where we need to get to go on this. And I took some really good notes on this. And there's going to be a lot of money coming in for broadband services. And I think as a body, we know what the rub is. We have competing private companies, we have the co-ops who are very jurisdictional, we have the Comcast, we have the WAVE, and they have their coverage areas, and they say we're not going to go into these rural areas because it's not cost effective. Well, there may be a way for government, uh, this body of commissioners, you know, we wear two hats. We wear a corporate hat, and we also wear a man government management hat. And I think there's some things that we can do to try to serve these rural areas. I would like to set up a talking group or an advisory committee, but I think, judging from Joe Fernell's, what he says, whoever is on this group 
and whoever is the chair needs to be so hugely passionate about delivering broadband services to our rural areas. Uh, and in this, before we, one of the first charges would be how to identify those areas who don't have it. Well, you know, we had, we had the session, the, the town hall last week, and we had some people tell us. And because of that, we had the representative from Comcast who's gonna go out and try to, you know, massage some things. Well, one of the ideas that came through because our schools are so adversely affected is a, a, a good and easy way to identify some of these areas is to have it to be a homework assignment from the schools given to the students to report back to the teachers, this is my broadband or internet situation, and not using addresses, but maybe ISPs or zip codes or general information so they're not obviously not singled out to say, you know, we need it in this area. We desperately need it in this area. Um, and, and broadband does include more than just fiber, but the most expensive part of broadband is digging the ditch. And one of the things that Clackamas County can do through our, our codes and zoning is whenever we give a permit, if we give permits, or whomever, who was ever digging the ditch out there for electricity or water or sewer, they just automatically run a cable in there, a dark cable, so that area has broadband. And I think in some of our new subdivisions, that is really possible. Um, like I say, I have tons of notes. Um, the counties, you know, and then Rob Bovet, the attorney, really had some good insight in that because of recent court cases, uh, the counties do have the power to implement broadband but yet support a free market. And if we want to remain neutral as a provider, I think we can get there without bringing in the huge hand of government because I, I heard that say, I mean, I don't know if I want to be a service provider, all honestly. I think if we could somehow establish a private uh, public partnership, Clackamas County is the tool that we use to apply to the federal government for broadband for in our rural areas. We are able to do that just like the ring that we did previously years ago and then expand that into our more rural areas. And then once the expense, expensive part is done, let the providers decide for themselves who wants to service that area. Because what I hear from providers, we can't afford to run the cable. I mean, I'm a perfect example. I have been through everything. Every single call that we had to come in on that town hall, I personally experienced. I mean, wave won't come down me, wave is next door to me, but they won't come down my driveway because my driveway is a quarter mile. I says, well, what if I dig a ditch for you? They wouldn't even do it if I dug my own ditch. And I couldn't do it, obviously, Comcast, and I'm on the Beaver Creek telephone line, and they already know me, they just know me. I am the very last person on Beaver Creek Communications, and my signal is so weak. I says, can I get on to the Malala? The Malala um, internet's right next to me. Can I opt out? Well, they won't let you opt out to a service provider that provides better service. They will not let you do it. They're very territorial. So I, every year, I purchase something at, in my home to boost my signal just so I can have your basic internet service. And it's, it's a problem. Another statistic that I thought was just fascinating is the COVID has been such a multiplier. Um, it has been... In our telemedicine, it has been a 70% multiplier in that we have exceeded our time frame by 10 years, what normally it should be done. So if you take a look at COVID just as a multiplier for other things as well, and we know what has happened with COVID. You know, people are home on the internet. Um, we, have, we have the kids' school sucking internet. We have if the parents are home from work, if we have elderly people doing their telemedicine, they can't get on. And I think some of this is going to stay for the future. I don't know that we'll ever go clear back to the way things used to be. So I'm throwing out ideas um, 
to uh, what this board might want to do, how we might want to go about getting it set up, to at least start a conversation, because I think we um, need to really look at this in our county. I, um, I think we have got on the, uh, maybe the assumption that we were doing pretty well and we had some outliers, but we are not doing well. And when I, hear, when I heard stories, and Mark was there yesterday, from some of the stuff they've done in Wasco County and New Matilla County, oh my God, they have totally eclipsed what we are doing in Clackamas County. And it's no accident that Google located their call center in the Dalles in Wasco County. And it was because Wasco County was able to provide spanking internet service. So kind of keep that in your mind. Mark, did you have some comments on this? Well, the AOC conference yesterday was very interesting, but the, the part about broadband was particularly uh, interesting. And I did learn a lot about some of the things we can do in Clackamas County to uh, push out broadband to our most rural spots. So there's, there's direct burial and there's some other repeater issues, uh, equipment that we might look at. I'm convinced that we can get broadband to everybody in the county somehow, some way, within a reasonable amount of time. Yeah. And so I just want to uh, start a conversation. Commissioner Savas, are you in the queue? Go ahead. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So um, earlier this year, you uh, appointed me as the liaison for for the uh, for the broadband effort. And um, on Friday um, at AOC, there was a presentation from uh, the Business Oregon Broadband Office, um, and that gentleman spoke for quite a while, asking. He's new to the position. Um, so he was asking how do we get further engagement and um, while in my exchange um, in conversation um, it be it became evident to me when I stated the population of the rural area of Clackamas County and it's uh, you know it struck me that we probably are population wise um, maybe the Chutes County might be close maybe Marion County but we maybe have the largest population of uh, rural um, in in the in the state but if, if we're not, we're, off, we're in the top three, if, if nothing else. But uh, the issue is the issue is funding. Um, I also sit on the rural caucus for the um, for NACO, and the challenge here is this is a nationwide problem. You know, it's uh, most of the country geographically the landscape is rural. So the, the challenge is is how do we do this efficiently? How do we how do we position ourselves, what kind of packages can we assemble for grant funding. And so that's the work that I've been doing or trying to get encouraged uh, behind the scenes or not behind the scenes, but in my role as liaison. But I did want to just say that we did make a good connection on Friday. And um, I want to make sure our staff um, get the handoff to that because the, um, the business Oregon is looking for ideas and connections uh, with uh, with us and with other uh, jurisdictions on how to expand it. And really, it is gonna take a cash infusion to make some of these things work, but um, you know, I, I think we need to get heavily involved um, as much as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, the, op the, the opportunity lies in the amount of funding we can get. So I'm happy to continue that role if there is some kind of a greater effort um, whether it's a statewide committee or whatnot, but I'm mm -hmm. um, happy to participate. I was I was really enjoying participating on Friday mm -hmm. and uh, learned of uh, Mr. Holbrook, um, that's his name, um, who is the now the um, the head of the uh, Business Oregon Broadband Office. So it's great to know the state set that up. Well, I, I would like you to continue with that, Commissioner Savas. The Oregon Broadband Advisory Council has a very adept individual in that, too. And in the packet that I'm going to give to you folks, uh, the governor's recommended budget proposes $118 million investment in broadband that will focus on underserved committees that have been disproportionately impacted through the pandemic, number two, ensuring every school across Oregon is connected, number three, and connecting 50 additional communities statewide, and maybe we can be a target for that. Federally, there is a whole bunch of money, whole bunch of money, American Broadback Build Build Out Act, sponsored by Collins and Rosen, 15 billion. State Fix Act, sponsored by Scott and Graham, 20 billion. The Bridge Act, 30 billion. Accessible Affordable Internet for All Act, 
Clyburn, Klobuchar, 80 billion. The Lift America Act, Pallone, 80 billion. So it sounds like we have some action in Congress. And if we can figure out, if we can get organized and figure out what our next steps are and using the resources that of Oregon, Associated Oregon Counties and our technical staff, I would like um, to us to Paul, and maybe you want to get on this since you're the liaison and any other commissioner who wants to serve. I know Martha has an interest in this as well. I do think we need at least to have a talking group uh, get together uh, outside of the, the Board of County Commissioners, a talking group together to sit down and start having conversations and, and identify what our resources are and start pulling together people to talk to us and educate us because we need to be educated on how to move forward on this. Your light is on. Commissioner Fisher. Commissioner Fisher. Yeah, thank you. I really appreciate this conversation. Curious, don't want to put you on the spot, Gary, but I know that our previous commission was wanting to look at getting some expertise in to look at a business plan because we had recognized that mapping the county is really important. There was an effort by a, two other commissioners on the commission of wanting the county to become an ISP provider. The three of us that remain on the commission were probably more in favor of a public-private partnership, not wanting government. And my concern was government overreach. I don't like that. But I'm just curious, where are we now? And do we need to rethink? Because this was um, before all of the awareness that we put this, that in motion. So, Well, thank you for asking, Commissioner. So our county staff has been working on this for the past 10 years. We have what's called the Clackamas Broadband Exchange, which... Well, maybe not as uh, recognized as Wasco County is one of the known recognized in Oregon as one of the most uh, innovative ways of providing broadband support to its residents. Clearly, there's a need for rural broadband without a doubt. Yes, the prior Board of Commissioners did authorize staff to conduct, hire a contractor to prepare a business plan and answer the question, should Clackamas County become an internet service provider, yes or no? The draft of that report is just finished last week. I saw a draft. I asked for some edits. It will then be shown before in the full board, I hope in early June, so you can see what that contractor is recommending. I will tell the answer is no, not for us to become our own internet service provider, but to partner with businesses, exactly what you're saying. Uh, so if I may, commissioners, I do suggest, can we present this to you in early June, and then from there you can decide about forming the task force or advisory committee and how you'd like to go forward with next steps. Thank you. Sounds good to me. That's a great first step, Gary. You read our minds, didn't you? <laughs> Staff That's always does. That's what a good administrator does. We always do. Thank you. Yeah, and I look forward. I'm very excited about really kicking this down and, and really doing something because the need is so huge. Oh, my gosh. And I do think that our government can be the leader and the catalyst uh, for our privates and just help them along the way where we can. Christina, there's a light on. Commissioner Fisher has her hand raised. Fisher? Yeah. Oh, so, go ahead. Yeah. So, Gary... Just to get that ready for June, I think what thing that I would really like to know, and Chair Smith alluded to it, is how we map the county. I participated in NACO's legislative conference, which talked about how important that will be across the country. So I believe that there will be some federal resources because that is a major priority of that. Where is their service? Where isn't their service? And I would really like to know what the best thinking is at this time for us moving forward, because there's nothing, I and mean, we, perfect town hall to really hear from people. You can't, those are the facts. Those are the facts. People are left without service, and we right. have an unprecedented opportunity to fix that. How so. ironic is it that government tells them to stay home and Zoom, but yet they don't have Zoom available because government didn't get it to them? Oh my gosh, that's just a nightmare for me. Right? Yeah. Okay, Gary, any other comments on this topic? Thank you, commissioners. I think this is something that we'll have fun with, too. Um, Gary, what's up next? Great, thank you. So we'll be back to you in a policy session in early June, and then can go from next steps there. Thank you, Chair. Uh, next is a request for consent agenda. There's a long one, but we'll be as efficient as we can. I have asked directors, they can do this via Zoom, because I didn't feel them sitting in this room waiting for you to come to this was a good use of their time, uh, except Sarah's here, aren't you? So because <laughs> you decided to stay, you gotta go first, Sarah. Consent agenda. Ready? So we'll I'm going to jump to the end of the list, business and community services. 
Approval of State of Oregon Department of Administrative Services grant agreement with Clackamas County to provide additional funding for grants to the small, to the local small business community impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. This agreement will add $2.7 million, $2,700,986.76 in relief fund dollars, making the total agreement value $6,869,522.76 funded through the state of Oregon. No general funds are involved. This is what Chair Smith referred to earlier in this meeting. This extra $2.7 million we receive from the state. This is just acknowledging that receipt. Sarah, anything to add? <laughs> Please. I think you've covered it all. Yes, it's acknowledging the receipt. The state chose to modify an existing agreement that we had with them from December and added the $2.7 million to it. So this simply allows us to accept those dollars. They made a few modifications to it, which was just to extend the term, add the money. And then uh, once we sign and return it, they will transfer the funds to the county and we'll be able to facilitate the program in the way that is devised by the team. How are these uh, funds going to be dispersed? We are still working on that. Um, in the past, we went through an organization called Micro Enterprise Services of Oregon. Um, so we're looking at ways to do that. We're also talking to the business recovery centers, but there are some legal complexities in the types of agreements we can have and who those can be with. So we will be coming back to you with the final recommendation on how so to disperse So you're talking those. about the Chambers of Commerce who are really Correct. active. Now, would they require a subcipient uh, contract agreement to be able to do that, Gary? Why would? We already have agreements in place for the funds they have been distributing. There is, there is a slight hitch in allowing this greater number of dollars, but we are looking at ways that we can make, let the business resource centers be the distributors of the funds. So we're trying to work out behind the scenes how to make that work. Okay, but That good. is kind of, I think, the direction we need to go, Sarah. It is. Yeah. It is the direction, um, and the complexity is around that contractual versus subrecipient relationship. So, so I'm assuming back. that we can get that worked out. We can. We'll have a, a plan in place, and we're working with disaster management um, under the EOC umbrella to put together the full recommendation so that we can get these dollars to the businesses as soon as possible. Um, I know there's at least one resource center has stepped up with a very ambitious plan. And, um, and I really admire that. And I would, um, there's value besides the dollars in acknowledging our, our private partners who wanna do that, that it's already in place. And so let's really take a hard look at that if you could. Okay, Thank absolutely. You. So this is simply to put on your consent agenda, acceptance of the funds from the state. Thank so. you, any ob objection to this? Hearing that, it's a go. Great, we'll do that. Uh, next also is Sarah, North Clackamas Parks and Recreation District. Amendment to the interagency agreement between North Clackamas Parks and Recreation District and Health, Housing, and Human Services, Social Services Division. This amendment increases the contract value by $44,653 with a maximum contract value of $446,020. This is funded through the Older Americans Act. No general funds are involved. Go ahead, Sarah. Thank you. Gary has covered the high points. Uh, the services provided here include congregate and home delivered meals, health promotion activities, transportation, and information and referral activities. So these services being facilitated through this agreement link residents with resources to meet their individual needs, um, which increases their ability to remain independent and interactive with the community. So we're also asking for your approval to put this forward. Any comments? Any objections? Hearing none, I believe that's a go. Great, thank, thank you, you, Sarah. I'll, I'll keep going in this direction on, the, on my list. Department of Transportation and Development is next. Approval of an intergovernmental grant agreement with the state of Oregon acting by and through its Department of Transportation, Commerce and Compliance Division for the Clackamas County Motor Carrier personnel to perform commercial vehicle inspections at state way stations. This is, there's no financial impact. This is an agreement only. Uh, who do you have? Uh, Dan Johnson? Yeah, Dan Johnson, go ahead. I'm not sure what else I'm going to add. Uh, just basically to be clear, there's no financial impact to this agreement. It's simply an agreement uh, to partner with uh, the Oregon Department of Transportation to provide um, uh, for the use of their facilities to provide way uh, services for our waymaster. That's it. Thank you. Any comments for um, Dan Johnson? Any objections? Hearing none. Okay. Thank you, Dan. Great, thank you. Moving back to the beginning of your list, Housing Authority of Clackamas County, 
First item, request approval to apply for and accept grant funding if awarded from the Meyer Memorial Trust to ensure diversity, equity, and inclusion training for public housing authority leaders. Maximum grant award is $172,000. No general funds are involved. Is it Rod? Yeah, Rod. Rod Cook, please go ahead. Uh, good, good morning, Chair Smith, Commissioners, Administrator Smith. Um, this came about because Jill Smith is uh, the Housing Authority Executive Director. She's currently serving as the President of the Housing Authorities of Oregon and is offered HAC to uh, serve as a fiscal entity for accounting and reporting purposes if the grant application is awarded. Most public housing authorities do not have adequate access to DEI training, uh, diversity training. The cost to hire consultants is prohibitive. This grant would allow public housing authority leaders to work collaboratively on creating more equitable systems across the state. There would be no general fund involved in this effort. Commissioner Savas. Yeah, uh, my question to Rod is uh, knowing that we do a lot of that here in house um, and I'm sure that doing more would do, be no harm, but are, is this money um, available to be spent on our contractors to provide services for the housing authority? It seems like that might be a um, I won't say a weakness, but we certainly do our share here, but I, I, I want to make sure that anyone representing the county, nonprofits, others, contractors, um, have as much of that training as possible. Um, I don't know right offhand, but if the public house, housing authorities across the state are all going to benefit from this, uh, we could certainly uh, talk to Jill and that group about offering this also to the actual providers of the housing services. I would think that they would have that would want that to happen and have their engagement. But I, I can't tell you for a fact that that's how the application has been put forward. Yeah, how, what, what, what's the duration? I mean, is there a period of time, like a year or two years that this is supposed to be pushed out or? Yeah, this is a two year grant. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, it seems like a lot of money for just our county staff. I mean, your thoughts on that? It's, it's actually going to uh, be for the whole state. So oh, we're okay. organize, yeah, this, we're just being the fiscal agent or the umbrella, as it were, for the whole state. So okay. all the public health authorities will benefit from this. Okay, that, that, that helps. Thank you, Rod. Uh -huh. Any other comments or objections? Seeing none, I believe that's a go. Okay, next approval, a request approval to apply for a public housing and safety and security grant. Maximum grant award is $250,000 and is granted from the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development. No general funds are involved. Rod, go ahead. Okay, our housing authority uh, maintains the oldest public housing in Oregon and does not currently have a sophisticated security system to help make property safer for the residents. Um, this uh, grant would allow us to put some cameras in and create some safety perimeters around our properties. And so, and there's no general fund involved in this effort. Any objections on this item? Seeing none, it's a go. Next, approval of an amendment to the intergovernmental agreement between the Housing Authority of Clackamas County and Clackamas County Social Services for a full-time case manager for the Housing Authority of Clackamas County program participants. The amendment will add $105,000 for a contract, contract total of $275,000, which is funded through general funds that go to Health, Housing, and Human Services. Rod, go ahead. Yes, and this amendment extends the term of the agreement by six months and increases case management services from part-time to full-time. <clears throat> the increase in funding will shift level of service to full-time retroactively to 7-1-2020. It is anticipated that this position will be funded through a different source in 2022. What, Rod, and there what, are general funds involved in this one. Uh, Rod, what would be that different source in 2020? Do have you been able to identify it? I believe it'd be it'd, it'd be coming out of the Metro bond. Would be my guess, my best guess. Are you okay with that, Gary? That's allowable use of those funds. This is. This has already been budgeted, some funds that's already been budgeted in H3S for this purpose, so I'm okay with this request, yes. Any other uh, questions or objections? 
Hearing none, that's a go. Okay, great. Next, Health, Housing, and Human Services. Rod will stay with us. Approval to apply for a funding opportunity with the Oregon Health Authority for increasing community access to care utilizing Measure 110 funds. Estimated total to be more than $150,000 with funding through the Oregon Health Authority. No general funds are involved. Rod, go ahead. Okay, these funds, if awarded, would be utilized to support opening a behavioral health clinic in the Sunnyside area of Clackamas County. Opening this clinic will provide improved access to mental health and substance use disorder services to Clackamas County residents. And as Gary said, there's no general fund involved in this. Well, that's gonna be needed. Yeah. Any objections? Seeing none, it's a go. All right, next, approval of an amendment to the intergovernmental agreement with the Oregon Health and Sciences University for the Oregon Care Coordination Program. This amendment would add $89,977 with a contract maximum value of $234,164. Funding through grants from the Oregon Health and Science University, no general funds are involved. Go ahead, Rod. Yeah, and just to add on, uh, through this program, public health provides a community health nurse to facilitate community-based and family-centered care coordination for children with special health needs, which include assessments, coordination of care, and knowledge of local services. And as Gary's mentioned, there's no general fund involved in this effort. Any comments or objections? Seeing none, that's a go. Next, approval of an amendment to an intergovernmental subrecipient agreement with the city of Wilsonville, Wilsonville Community Center, to provide social services for Clackamas County residents. This amendment adds $29,483 for a maximum agreement of $125,389 and is funded through the Older American Act and a ride connection pass-through funds. No general funds are involved. Rod, go ahead. Yes, and to add to this one, services provided include providing a congregate and home-delivered meals, health promotion activities, transportation, and information and referral services to residents living in the Wilsonville area. And as Gary's mentioned, there is no general fund involved in this effort. Any comments or objections? Seeing none, that's a go. All right, next, approval of an intergovernmental agreement with the state of Oregon acting by and through its Oregon Health Authority for the operation and financing of community mental health addiction treatment recovery and prevention services and problem, gam problem gambling programs. Revenue contract maximum value of $8,324,692.18 with funding through the state of Oregon and the Oregon Health Authority. No county general funds are involved. Rod, go ahead. Yes, and just to let you know, the, the BCC is the local mental health authority that operates the community health program funded by this agreement. The Behavioral Health Division ensures that the funds are administered according to the terms set forth by the agreement to provide local administration, behavioral health, and addiction services. As Gary's mentioned, there's no general funds involved in this effort. Any comments or objections from commissioners? Seeing none, that's a go. Next, approval of an intergovernmental agreement with Clackamas County Circuit Court to provide pr protective order and support services. This amendment adds $73,277 for a maximum value of $225,439 with funding through the United States Department of Justice. No general funds are involved and no match is required. Go ahead, Rod. Yes, in this last one, uh, this amendment will enable the Circuit Court to provide assistance to more individuals seeking protective orders due to domestic violence, sexual assault, stalking, and elder abuse. The circuit court will provide assistance to 460 petitioners. They will also conduct 640 consultations and provide 44 trainings with domestic violence advocates and partners. And as Gary has mentioned, there's no general fund involved in this effort. Any comments or objections? <clears throat> Seeing none, that's a go. Okay, thank you, Rod. Last department, Department of Finance, approval of a resolution for a Clackamas County supplemental budget for fiscal year 2020, 2021. This is an increase in appropriations of $8,055,479. Is Elizabeth presenting? I am looking, I do not see her on the Or line. Krista? Nope. Okay, we'll hold on this and come back to you later this afternoon. That's the request for consent agenda. The last item today is Commissioner Communications. And who would like to go first on Commissioner Communication? I'd be happy to. 
Mark, go ahead. Yes. Good morning. Uh, I continue to get out and meet with nonprofits and all, that are helping our citizens in the county. And also, I take every opportunity to meet with people who are receiving some of the support from these nonprofits. Last Thursday, I visited the American Military Encouragement Network on 115th and Jennifer Street in Clackamas. Amen began as a Damascus Community Church outreach in 2005. It's all volunteer, so 100% of funds go to help veterans. And on that particular day last Thursday, hundreds of pounds of food were being distributed by some 25 volunteers throughout the region. Uh, I encourage you to look at www.amen-project.org for more information. I also had a meeting with the St. Vincent de Paul Council last Thursday uh, at 81st and Southwest Cornwell Street. Uh, Mr. Craig Loffridge briefed me on the outreach of their organization. Their focus is preventing people from falling into homelessness. And they provide support with food, rental assistance, and utility assistance. Uh, that was a very good briefing. I appreciate what St. Vincent de Paul is doing for the people of Clackamas County. And right next door is the Clackamas Service Center. So I stopped in there and said hello and had a very nice uh, uh, tour of their building there. They're doing a great job. I also had the opportunity to talk to some folks who received some support there, and they had nothing but good things to say about the Clackamas Service Center. So thank you to all of you who worked there for all the good things you're doing. And um, finally, yesterday, I had the privilege to be at the Association of Oregon Counties Conference in Hood River with Chair Smith and Commissioner Fisher. And we learned a lot about legislation, uh, committee reports, met a lot of other good commissioners from throughout the state. But in particular, I was interested with the briefing on broadband that Chair Smith spoke to you about. And I think you're going to see some good things coming along. I know a lot of work has been done on broadband in the county, and I appreciate that. But I think yesterday we had a new awareness of the importance of broadband and some ways to get it out to our more re rural residents. So thank you very much. Thank you. Commissioner Fisher. Yeah, so um, yesterday was great being with our fellow commissioners from around the state. First time we've been together in, gosh. Over a year, I think. Really long time. So, and of course, all the presentations are always very good and insightful. But truly, it's sitting around the tables and <clears throat> hearing from our other commissioners about how things are going on around the state and how's the vaccine distribution been, where's their vaccine hesitancy, what are the concerns, what are the issues, and it's just such a gift to be able to have those conversations. And as a Clackamas County Commissioner, we have just such an amazing landscape of incredible geographic diversity and political diversity and, and employment diversity. We are very broad, multi-sectored, urban, rural, suburban. So it, every moment that I, every time I have a chance to really connect with my commissioners around the state, it brings home the issues that are right here in Clackamas County. So that was pretty awesome. I was it really was. happy for that. I'm really hoping that we continue this. And I'm also really liked going to Hood River. Next month, it's going to be in Sun River. I really wish there was a way for us to get around the state because we can um, get to know our, our other counties better. I... Um, so you two were gone when we got to the board meeting, so I do want to let you know that the board, the Association of Oregon Counties Board, did approve the new dues structure that had a tremendous amount of vetting across a lot of different inputs, and it was a unanimous support for that. So that was some big action there at the AOC meeting. And... Um, 
other than that, we all know what's going on at the legislature. We keep, you know, racing to the finish. <laughs> and uh, AOC continues to stay on top of, of all of those efforts. And that's, a, that's very good support for us, I think. Thank you. Commissioner Savas. Yeah, <clears throat> I just want to just build a little bit on the vaccine thing. I, I guess, you know, when we look back after you know, we're back to normal. I would, would sure like to be able to learn as much as we can about what went right and what didn't go so right. Um, and I'm just actually even today even puzzled as to why some of the counties in Oregon have a greater vaccination rate or greater vaccinations available um, than Clackamas County, for example. Um, so I don't know how that happened, um, but I, you know, I thought it was going to be done on a per capita basis, and I'm sure that you know maybe different counties um, might have um, some populations that are, you know, not interested in the vaccine. Um, but you know, again, we're seeing some you know more conservative counties with higher vaccination rates. So I, I don't think that's really the issue. I just think that it may have been availability or aggressiveness. So I'd love to know how or why those those rates are are higher in some counties than, than Clackamas. Um, what I did want to talk about today, but we covered quite a bit of it earlier, was the broadband discussion. So what I might remind everyone of, um, or for those who don't know, um, who weren't here at the time, but when we did that um, uh, dark fiber um, circle, if you will, not the ring, yeah, the dark fiber ring around Clackamas County, it was aerial hung, it was not dug in the ground. Um, and actually, everything's underground board anyhow at, at this stage. At this stage of, of, uh, of, of any kind of underground or, or trenching is really just the underground work. But uh, when we did that, uh, one of the first folks we hooked up were the school districts. And you know, they say that hindsight is 2020. Um, but in hindsight, it would have been great to take the tens of thousands of dollars that the school districts saved. Um, and uh, broach a discussion about what if we were to invest some of those monies or future monies, actually, looking forward, future monies with the school districts as partners with this to make sure we get um, broadband pushed out to the homes, especially those where school children uh, or all people going to school have access at home. Because we got to remember, when we go home to do our homework, um, you know, those of us who have broadband, we take it, we just take that for granted that we can look up something on the internet. And that's such a big part of education anymore um, and, a, and a, an important tool. But just think for a moment, if you are at home and you're a student and you don't have that connection and your only place is school, uh, that, that's, a, that's, a, that's a handicap um, and that's really not fair. So um, I, I think that the discussion, or if it's a statewide panel or a local panel, whatever that might be, that needs to, we need to include schools in there because um, um, remote learning um, is a huge, a huge issue, and I think it will continue to be um, after hours, a school before hours, um, internet access is huge. So I am, uh, um, it really, I think the whole COVID crisis has really brought this home and given this a lot of energy and political energy and support. So it's just a matter of us positioning Clackamas County in a way that we can put together some attractive packages um, that we can try to seek funding um, from here forward to get Clackamas County connected. So I will be working hard on that. And I was very excited again by the um, conversation on Friday with this uh, new office uh, with the Oregon Business Broadband Office. So I will be pursuing that and meeting with staff here to um, get those connections made to see what we can do to enhance our coverage in Clackamas County. And that's what I have for today. Thank you, Commissioner Savas. Uh, we had a question from our town hall, on a broadband town hall, and it was, um, they asked about the regulations around the internet service providers and equitable access, and our TS came up with an answer. It's in your email, but I'm just going to read it here. Um, from Duke Dexter over at RTS, he says, the Federal Communications Commission, the FCC, regulates interstate, interstate and international communications by radio, television, wire, satellite, and cable in all 50 states. Currently, internet service is not a communication service that is regulated by the FCC, regardless of the transportation medium. 
And I think that is really interesting for us. Since internet service is unregulated, hello, there is no laws that require equal service or accessibility. The digital divide is a top priority for the FCC, but at this time, there is no regulation nor authority for a public agency to demand it. And I would submit to you when Rob Bovet, our attorney, was talking about it, he says there's been court cases won by counties that they can go ahead and do it. So because of the lack of regulation might actually benefit us as we're moving forward with this. Um, we're going, ready to adjourn. Who has a comment? Can you be brief? Yeah. So it's um, not a comment. I was just texted by staff reminding me that I had some, um, wanted to get, need to give an update on the homeless services measure um, local implementation plan process. I can do that. Why don't, why don't we do that afterwards? I've got it's, a meeting coming up that, that I'm... That sounds great. It's real short, won't take long, but we can or, absolutely do that after. Or you can do that in commissioner comment on Thursday. You'll have a broader audience. Oh, no, that's all right. Okay. This is just some... <laughs> I just want to just inform my board of some of the mechanics and the business of how that's going. Why don't we start out at 1.30 with that? Perfect. Oh, wait, we're not... We're meeting at 2, so I don't think we... No, we're, was it 1.30? We're, we're at 1.30 today. Oh, we, we moved the I sessions around this afternoon. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I'm and glad we'll, you told we'll, me. I wasn't going to be here till 2. Okay, we'll <laughs> recess until 1.30. Thank you very much.